Hey, what's going on? My name is Jack and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today, we are going to be going through Star Wars The Clone Wars The Review. Not the TV show, but the actual Clone Wars movie that released in 2008. And it was the first time we saw Anakin Skywalker with a Padawan. This film is very nostalgic to me. I love this film. I love rewatching it. I love rewatching The Clone Wars because I grew up on this. I'm 18 years old. I was like 8 or... Seven, it was like seven or eight when I first started watching this show. So, there's a lot there for me to talk about in what I like to look into and what I like about the, the series. So, let's just jump straight in and let's just begin. So, Star Wars The Clone Wars The Movie was one of those sort of movies, going back looking at it now, was one of their movies that just released. It was an hour and a half and it just seemed like it was a consistent of four episodes squidged together with the sort of same sort of plot outline where it showcased the amazing animation style the amazing story tone of what this clone wars would be the film at the beginning starts with the jedi obi-wan and anakin skywalker fighting to regain a piece of land that was the jedis that the droid army have taken over and the sith are trying to take unbeknown to them jabba the hutt who had who's featured in the original trilogy he didn't feature, he was mentioned within the first film of episode number one, but he never actually featured within the Star Wars continuity in the prequels, actually features within this film. His son, uh, I have to assume Jabba the Hutt Jr., who Ahsoka and Anakin call Stinky throughout the film, arrives, uh, seems to be ta taken, kidnapped by the Sith. The Sith are, of course, telling... Um, Telling, of course, Jabba the Hutt that the Jedi have killed his son, that they will not let this guy for him. And Count Dooku is, of course, the main, for me, the main sort of Jedi um, Sith Lord that, that's in this film. The amazing part about this, and the thing that I sort of dislike a little bit, is this is set right after episode two. Okay, this is set right after. So forget episode three. Episode three has not yet happened. Revenge of the Sith hasn't happened. But this is set at the end of episode two. Episode two, and of course, Anakin's army cut off. But that was never really mentioned in this film. Uh, it was sort of just like, yeah, like he just forgot that that was a big event in episode two. Sort of reckoned it a little bit, but they just didn't mention it, which was okay. Uh, of course, this film also, like I said, it features Ahsoka Tano, a brand new character of the Star Wars universe. A character I personally really love and cannot wait to see in her new show. Of course, you saw her in Mando. And I'll be reviewing The Mandalorian at some point on the channel. I've got to go back and re-watch them all. I'm very much excited to be able to do that at some point. Uh, but no, the Star Wars The Clone Wars is very much a movie where... The first part of it's just a completely different story, like the introducing of Ahsoka and them taking back this land. The second part is, of course, them getting Jabba's son from the from his temple, uh, this doom place where he's being held kidnapped in like a temple. He then goes back to Tatooine within the sort of third and fourth section of the film, which should have been episode three, towards the end of episode three, beginning of episode four. And they have sort of a big fight, him and Count Dooku do, that I've already discussed. The things I like about this film is it contributes to the Obi-Wan Anakin story uh, to begin with. It contributes to that. The one thing I'm very intrigued and very much loved about the show and loved about the series and where Star Wars is now going is that they decided that they were going to take an approach on, of course, Ahsoka Tano. They were like, you know what? We're going to give Anakin a Padawan. And I'll tell you something. Anakin Skywalker isn't no Jedi Master. He's no... He doesn't get the rank of master within episode three, as we know. But he's able to train a Padawan. But okay. He contributes to that training to become a master. They just didn't grant him it in episode three. And we, well, we know what happens there. But the thing this, this film slash part of the show does is it sets the story for the entire Clone Wars. We meet a guy called Captain Rex. Not so much within this. But later, did, we didn't know it then, but he'd become one of the best beloved characters of the Star Wars franchise. So, there is that to take on board. Of course, Star Wars The Clone Wars also took us to Tatooine again. It took us, um, 
it showed us what Padme and Madala is. Now, this is actually quite a nice little uh, thing. Is Padme and Madala, of course, is within the Clone Wars. And it's nice because it sort of sees her worry for Anakin. And it's all before that he turns to the Sith. So it's sort of a nice little... They are married within this continuity. It is a part of the Star Wars continuity. And there's, there's little hints towards that. The one thing I love... The one thing I love about this film, though... Is none of the original sort of cast from the movie returns, really. They're all voice actors, different people voicing them. They are perfect for this show. The one person I do love, however, that I did return for this... Samuel L. Jackson, he returned to portray Mace Windu once again in an animation. Of course, it's not the first time he's done animations with Samuel L. Jackson previously doing, four years prior to this, The Incredibles. And he's then come back for The Incredibles 2, which released ten years later to this. Of course, this show was very groundbreaking to me. I loved every single second of it because it just had, the movie had this sort of dynamic between Obi-Wan, Anakin, Ahsoka... Yoda had a dine out between Mace Windu. They, the way the story was crafted, it was very neatly uh, tied up towards the end. And I'm very excited to be able to go, go forward with the show as well. I have seen this show like six times now from beginning to end. Uh, I only seen it once to beginning to end though with the final season involved. But I've seen it within the, the original final seasons uh, at least six times. The one reason why I'm very excited to go back to the rewatch now is because... I very much do adore this show. I, it's one of my most favourite shows. I'd love it if they came back and did more Clone Wars stuff. I mean, it was called The Final Season, but there's always work around room. You can always tell origin stories. Uh, or you could just do, like, another Clone Wars. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe Luke has his own Clone Wars. Who knows? But I do love the Clone Wars show. I do love the movie. The movie sets the grounds for everything that we now know. And the thing about the prequels... Is they were very dry, not that great, back in 2005. The second this film and the show came out, it gave the prequels more strength. So as much as I'd love to bash the prequels, which I didn't really bash them, I don't particularly like the first one, but this show really did expand the prequels. And that was something that it needed. Whether they do that with The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and Rise of Skywalker, I would not know. Uh, I will give them a go if they do it, but I just don't know at this point. Of course, that leaves us with this other big opposing question within the Star Wars universe. Uh, with, of course, the Clone Wars. Is, why was Ahsoka Tano not within the third episode? If you guys know the answer, it's because she was in Season 7. And they put they did, they did something quite cool, because Ahsoka Tano was a brand new character. And the question on everyone's mind was, well, surely she'd have been in the third film. But she wasn't, and that was because they decided they'd go a route of putting her somewhere else in the continuity later down the line. But with that being said, I've done my little mini-review. I'm very much pumped for the rest of this sort of series to continue. Of course, I will give you a little teaser. The next film on the list of these solo movie trilogy review slash rankings that I'm doing here on the channel is, of course, Star Wars A Solo Story. So with that being said, I shall see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Jack, and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today we are doing the Han Solo, a solo story movie review. This is the solo film You're that they Disney something. decided to do after Rogue One. The reason we haven't yet reviewed Rogue One is because is that, of course, comes after Solo, a Star Wars story. So I'm reviewing that literally Money. after this video, uh, which will be tomorrow's at 10 o'clock in the morning in the UK time. Or is it something so If you else? want to be prepared for that, it's 10 a.m. UK time. Let's uh, get into the, the solo review. Solo is one of those interesting sort job. of films in my Big opinion. Shot gangster putting together where crew. I wasn't overly thrilled. I a driver. want to see Han Solo play by the video. Just around that tunnel, we had actually just seen Han Solo in the 2015 Star Wars Force Awakens movie. Well, what do you know? And I would very much love the original you trilogy. You know, yeah, I've no, said okay. this multiple times. He's the best smuggler around. around. The original I heard trilogy a story is my about you. I was wondering if it's true. Everything you heard about me is true. Then yes, but it's something that I will do for my brother. Like L3! Let's go right in man's face. Everything he's got is actually plus the trilogy rankings and all. It's just one if massive with us, bundle of stuff I have to do. I have a couple of videos now planned. I have the thumbnails on it. A lot of stuff I'm doing at the moment. 
try to gain more views and subscribers. So that is what I'm my next one. If you are new here to the channel, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Please comment down below about what you thought of Solo and if you haven't seen it, it is on Disney Plus. And you can do the seven day free trial for Disney Plus. When do you know how to fly? The film to me is very bold. Trying is the bomb in the box office. The reason why I didn't really watch it is I had a shower time. I was, however, wrong. Not having had a recording this film, not even for a cameo appearance, was a bit upsetting, but then again, they might have wanted him to come back and play a different character, but he doesn't like the fact that, you know, he doesn't like Han Solo, the character. What it seems, well, that's what it seems like anyway. But this film does something that. It's quite interesting. It shows us the origin story of Han and Chewbacca's relationship and how they got to know each other. It shows us the fact that before Princess Leia was on the scene, Han Solo had another girl. Yes, he did have another girl. It shows us the origin story of how he met Lando Calrissian, the original man to own the Is it revenge? Millennial Falcon before Han did. It shows us the um, Kessel Run that Money. Han Solo performs. The quickest time ever. He's the quickest guy to ever do the castle run. Or is it something else? And he boasts about it a little bit, but it's not a big you thing in the film. Until later just, on, he you know, brags about it. He's a little bit of a point on that. But job. the movie sets up what we have already do in a movie. I'm a driver. You know, it sets all that up. And, and it sets up the castle run. It shows us how he like did this. it. It shows us how much faster in that man. It shows us how... Lando, how how got the Millennium Falcon run very in the film. The one yeah, thing I do like about this film the is how they excluded I heard Dark a story Maul. about you. I was Dark Maul we have not seen at all in the Star Wars movie franchise true. since <laughs> 1999. Let's go with the Meat Man's face. Guns. Everybody who watches the Clone Wars knows that Dark Maul if you survived. That fatal fall, and unfortunately he does die in Star it. Wars Rebels. So with that being said, we have so much to go over the history of Star Wars, and Han Solo, Star Wars Let me give story, you some advice. two of course, we assume Rebels, everyone which is will betray you, know, you. A set of our year and you will never be disappointed. Before we take a really place feeling about this. in the Sky Wars trilogy. So, when so you know the thing with this yeah. is... The film touches on the Dark Maul aspect at the end. It touches on the uh, Lando Calrissian and Ham story. It touches on the uh, Battle of Khan. It touches on the crew that Han used to run with. And it also touches upon the job that's based within Tatooine. I'm not sure where this film has a use for this film. And of course, uh, before the A New Hope falls under. I don't think it's that long, to be honest, but, the, but there is a gap that, that we know of, right? So there is a bit of a gap. But this film shows us that Han Solo is going off to Tatooine to meet some people, do another heist, and I think these films will work. I think they should definitely do a sequel to this film with the same actor and just keep doing these sort of... Or do it like a Star Wars Disney Plus series for Han Solo. I think this would actually work better something. as a multiple season show. But Disney Plus wasn't a thing Is it when revenge? this film released. But I think if they were going to go back and do a sequel to this, I think they should do like a sequel series. Money. And just do a series, episodic um, series, where it just sort of builds it to Kenobi else? or builds into something else. And it'll be quite you interesting to good. see if they It'll do go down a sequel route with this good. film. It did what bomb at the job? box office, which most shot, likely means there isn't going to be a solo crew. But I myself can do those scenes in art because I was very spectacular. Skeptical of uh, Harrison Ford not being part of it. I was skeptical about it bombing at the box office. It was like good. This. Bad critic reviews. Bad people telling me it's a bad think? movie. I think it was just well, diehard Star Wars fans who just wanted them not to do a sequel because it wasn't a Harrison Ford. But if you're rewatching the nice mind, like I went into it last year, what you were watching it going, well, first time watching it, I'll have a look at mine. It was fantastic. This time around, I loved it. I was getting a bit bored throughout it, but that's probably because I was just... I'd already seen it once. I, it's not my favourite Star Wars film, if you come but it's also us, not my least favourite Star Wars film good. in the entire series. So there is my that. Buckle up, baby. This film is more enjoyable for me than some of the other movies 
But of course you'll find out this ranked within my ranking list. So the review of my, my personal advice. opinion on this one is it's an amazing we film. Everyone would I rewatch this film? You would never forget it. I got a really good Sick. feeling about this. No. I wouldn't do that. What I would do. When do you know how to take fly? Three yeah. months, like every hundred and ninety years months, old, even a year on a yearly you basis. Great. And I usually would miss this film out because I just have no interest. In so that being said, of course the best thing is it's a little sort of shorter review than normal. But I'm just so busy at the moment. I'm very much pumped to get onto the original trilogy. Of course, Rogue One releases tomorrow at 10 a.m. Like I said. And then you'll have the three film review, which is Clone Wars Solo Rogue One. You'll have the ranked review, which is the third video. And then I think we're jumping into A New Hope tomorrow at 6 p.m. I'm really looking forward to the video then. I'm, I don't particularly know what to say about that. But with that being said, I shall see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now. Hey, what's going on? My name is Jack, and welcome back to Loud Movies. Today, we are going to be doing the Rogue One Star Wars Story Review. This one released in 2016. The reason why it is the last review to be on the channel is because it's going straight after. Of course, uh, we're going to be coming out with a new hope right after this review, right after finishing with the reviews, the ranking lists, and all that. We'll be getting into a new hope. So that's why this review is at the very end, of course, at the ladder of the Disney Star Wars story films, of course. Clone Wars isn't a Star Wars story, but I've cooped it up in this collection, so we have a nice trilogy to rank and discuss in our rankings video. But that needs to be said later on in another video, because today we are purposely reviewing Rogue One, a Star Wars story. This film released in 2016, a film I was very much excited to go and see, and I'll tell you something, this film was beautiful. It really was. From the Darth Vader fight scene with the Imperial, uh, with, with the Rebels on the ship, just before the fact of Episode 4, that fight scene was insane. And this film really felt like a Star Wars film made from George Lucas. The other films with the Disney don't feel, they feel like Star Wars films, they don't feel like Lucas had any input. But this film goes back to its core of when the Star Wars series was brilliant amazing and it has that higher representation the story is fun the characters are cool they're new they're nice to get and get to know you have uh Tarkin you have uh you know Tarkin's in there they've remodeled Tarkin which is nicely done I thought he looked amazing within the movie Darth Vader's appearance that was really cool I loved the red eyes that you didn't get to see in the original trilogy. So they stepped up some, they tweaked some little things. But overall, the amazing sort of thing that we saw was, of course, the lightsaber battle at the end. And he was just slaying those rebel forces. I think the story went for a little bit of a darker uh, purpose. And I think that the story really worked. It showed how the rebels infiltrated the... the uh, the Empire's base section, how they got the plans to the Death Star, who told them about the weakness within the Death Star, and it just sort of developed on the origin story of how they had everything ready prepared for when the New Hope turned up. The story sets off like no other Star Wars story. It has a young child when her parents are killed by, of course, the Imperial forces, and that sort of spawns into the film. Rogue One for me was this sort of Star Wars film that I was very excited to see when it came out. I've watched it a couple of times. It's one of them films that I would like rewatch again if I do the Star Wars series watching them. But it's one of them also, it's one of them films that feels so connected to the original trilogy that you forget that there was the sequel trilogy. It feels so fresh and beautiful and the way they constructed it. Feels like this film was made by the original people who made Star Wars, uh, A New Hope, Empire and Return of the Jedi. It feels like a classic origin sort of movie from the original trilogy. Something that which brings out really good questions of my own. Of course, Felicity Jones plays Ginny Jane Aruzo. She is the main protagonist, the main character that we follow within this. 
as she tries to uh, get the rebels to infiltrate uh, the Death Star plans and get them. Because Jin's father is probably taken by the Galactic Empire to help them complete the Death Star. When she grows up, she joins a group of resistant fighters who aim to steal the Empire blueprints. So her father is the one who built the Death Star, helped construct it, helped finish it, the model off. And he left, what, as we know, the weakness. Because the weakness in the Death Star really doesn't make that much sense. But it does now because they went in, they filled this little gap. And instead of making it a bad movie, like some of the other Star Wars films they've done, Disney have done in the past. Like, for instance, uh, Solo A Star Story. No, not the best. It's a good film, but it's not the best of the bunch. And especially as an origin story, it's not great. They focused in on new characters, a new world sort of thing. That just sort of ties everything up quite nicely. And I think that's why this works over other Star Wars projects that Disney have done. Because they're trying to reuse old characters. Of course, I love The Mandalorian. I love Bad Batch. I love The Clone Wars. That, of course, Disney have had a hand in helping make the final seasons or new seasons and stuff like that of this show. Of course, Mando is solely Disney and so is Bad Batch. But Clone Wars was a sort of revamp from Disney. They finished off the final series that everybody... That everybody wanted but the show but the, the the movie shows us um what life was like before luke came into the picture it shows us just how bad everything gets it also shows us that there were still four sensitives and it, it has some amazing fight scenes in that the film isn't really heavily about fights it's more about the story plot of getting from a to b to c to the death star um, and it all sort of makes just a little bit of sense. If you then go into episode four, which I'm about to do, it sort of wraps things up quite nicely in this movie, where if you watch this, then you go straight into episode four, you just know what's happening. You know what's happened before. And it's just one of them little, like, nice little nods that Disney did. But like, well, okay, we're going to sit down for our first a Star Wars story movie. We're going to create what happened before. For episode 4. Because of course at this point. Uh, only The only film that had released before this. Was 2015's Force Awakens. Which was madly loved. And everybody loved it. Because it was the return of Star Wars. This film came out. And my god it was so good. Of course. Um, the, the other thing that I will say about this film. Is. It, it released of course. The year that Carrie Fisher passed away. So it was actually quite. Um, nice because they did like a tribute thing to her at the end of the movie because it released uh, on December 13th and I believe they went back and did some editing and they had like a rest in peace Carrie Fisher thing it was either for this film or it was for Star Wars 8 I might be getting mixed up there but I, I do believe it was this film because of course Princess Leia does also feature within this film but this film has some very interesting characters and the thing is with this also with this film is it makes you sort of forget how dark Darth Vader is. Like, the presence of Darth Vader within this film. This is something that I want to also point out. We've watched the original trilogy many, many times. If you're a big Star Wars fan like I am, you've watched it many times. This film makes you really sort of absorb all the information. And I was finding that, oh my god, Darth Vader is actually genuinely... His presence is more scary in this film than it is in episode 4, 5, and 6 combined. Because we know the good guys have to win. This film was very unpredictable. And the ending, the ending scene. The... Uh, the... Oh, what was it? It was the, when he came into one of the Imperial Troopers. And they started making excuses as to why the Death Star shot at a planet. And why the, you know there's these, these plans and everything. And there's so much problems uh, with, this, with, with this flawed character. That Darth Vader doesn't really say much. And it's, his presence says most of the words that need to be said. And that was something that I really did enjoy. Was back in 2012, they showed the original Star Wars clip of Darth Vader. And, it, and, and I believe like people were then going, will Darth Vader return within the Star Wars universe? Well, I didn't particularly want it. But this film did something amazing. And it did, did something quite nice in a nice little nod to, of course... The original trilogy, and that was where fans wanted the Star Wars series to go, was more of a let's keep it to that original trilogy sort of vibe. 
They did that with The Force Awakens, and then they sort of went off track with, with The Last Jedi. But we'll get into that when I do my Force Awakens and my other reviews on that. And we'll talk about all of the issues the sequel trilogy has at some point. Because I also have another video as to why people think the sequel trilogy is as bad, but it's not as bad. Also, I don't know. I have plans. I have plans to do Star Wars videos here for a while. But this movie here, if you haven't seen it, which seems very unlikely if you're a Star Wars fan, it is probably the best... Disney Star Wars film that they've done. Um, I'm not including Mando in this because Mando is, of course, a TV show, but this is probably the best Star Wars adaptation they've done because it ties in so beautifully with, of course, A New Hope. So with that being said, I'm going to send you all off on this video. I'm going to end the video now. We're going to be having the full review, the full ranking of all of these three films, of the from the Clone Wars, Rogue One, Solo. We're going to have all of them films ranked for you here on the channel. We're going to have the full review up. We're going to have so many other videos coming out. Episode 4 will be coming very, very soon. And I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye for now.